forward now. I'm gonna do it on my computer this time because if you do it in the cloud and you run out of space, then you lose the video. So take note of that, that does happen. Okay, um, so our agenda today, we did our introductions. Our main presentation today is going to be how to build a lead generation funnel with Elementor. <coughs> so let me introduce our presenter here. Are you looking to improve your skills using lead generation on your website? So here, you, here we are today with our guest presenter. <coughs> he is from the Miami Elementor Group, Carlos Vasquez. Carlos is the owner of Miami Marketing and Automation Gorillas. His digital marketing career officially launched in 2003 with a prank call to Fidel Castro. We must hear about this, Carlos. I must hear about this sometime today in this presentation, if not later. This experience led him to build digital marketing campaigns for companies like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Disney, Universal Studios, <clears throat> and more. Now he runs an agency that specializes in building funnels and automation for small to medium businesses. Carlos is a US Marine combat veteran. Carlos, thank you for your service and welcome to Chicago Elementor here. I'm gonna stop sharing so that if you're probably sharing, um, let me give you presenter control here. So everybody, please round of applause, virtual round of applause for Carlos. All right. Welcome, Carlos. Let me make you a co-host here just in case you need to uh, see some. All right. Stuff. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the goods on my side. So that way you guys can have a better uh, idea on how this, this all works. So, okay. okay. All right. So, well, good evening. Um, Thank you for the intro, Mike. Thanks for letting me have a little bit of a soapbox here because sometimes, you know, we, we run elementary groups and, um, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's such a fun platform. It's, it's such a great community. And actually, I know Oscar, he's actually a part of the Miami uh, elementary group as well. So he, thank God for virtual because we get to kind of travel the, the world in this case. So uh, just like uh, Mike said, I'm in Miami and it's freezing in Miami. I don't care what y'all Chicagoans say. It's 52 degrees today, right now. I this is the only long sleeve shirt I have. So, uh, listen, I'm <laughs> suffering over here. Okay, so um, but I actually came down <laughs> south. I was driving, picking up the kids. I told Mike, Mike, do me a favor. Let me. Uh, I, 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 it's one hour afterwards. But if you don't mind, I like if I can come around eight ish, which is your your time, which is the time right now. So thanks for accommodating and let me have the opportunity. So, um, one of the things I'm known for is building funnels building marketing automation and building whatever attracts people to get them to give you their information. So that way you could try to sell them using the power of automation. All right. So a, a quick little story um, regarding that Fidel Castro, that is officially how my digital marketing career officially launched, meaning how I started getting paid to make money doing things online. A quick run through as Mike said, I, um, I'm a U.S. Marine, once a Marine, always a Marine. So I finished my first tour of duty in 2003. And I've always built websites. I'm a Linux guy. I've always been, do I, I, I learned web, <coughs> website creation with the power of front page. I'd right click a, a website, view source, paste it on front page. And I basically learned a lot of my stuff like that. So I joined the Marine Corps in 1999. In the Marines, I, I went in as an ammunition technician, which has nothing to do with computer specialist, computer anything. Um, in fact, my recruiter tried to pull a fast one on me because I, I, I didn't get the score to be a computer guy. But he says, he tells me, Carlos, as an ammunition technician, all of the ammunition information gets put into computers. And that way you can control all the databases that have all the information related to the, to the bullets and the, 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 the rounds, the bombs, the missiles, the grenades. And I'm thinking, that sounds more like data entry. And that's not what I'm looking for. I want to be a computer guy. I want to build servers. I want to network them. I want to do the fun stuff. They're like, yeah, but you know what, Carlos? Then he kept it real. You didn't score high enough on the ASVAB to get, you know, to do computers. So you're stuck doing ammunition technician. So I was being an ammunition technician, but then someone caught a whiff that I could do computer stuff and they, they gave me a little test. And then I, I ended up bypassing the whole requirement system to be a computer guy. So I lucked out with that one. But I was done with, my, with the Marine Corps for my first tour in 2003. And I said, I'm done with the Marine Corps. I want to move on. Let me see what this world has for me. 
and I was collecting unemployment because after you, you, you serve honorably, you get to come back home and, and collect unemployment. And I didn't know what to do with my life at that moment. I was living in my mom's, just hanging out, chilling. I had some cash because I, I, I did deploy to Iraq and we got to save money. So I didn't want to spend it. I was at home with my mom and then I had two good friends of mine. They were morning show jocks on the radio. And um, I said, guys, I'd love to build your website. Let me go ahead and build it. Uh, let's have some fun and let me just do it. And they didn't care. We were friends. They said, sure. So they, it was a morning show. So I was already used to waking up early in the morning. So I would go in the morning time. We'd be there by five o'clock in the morning. And um, I'd just go there, build the website, add content, whatever. And one of the things that we were known for was prank calling a bunch of people. We ended up prank calling like, I built a, a, a contact form. You submit your information of someone you want us to prank call. And we prank call. We were great with voices. And since people would submit personal information, not too personal or personal enough to know about a circumstance that they're going through. Like for example, if you're trying to buy a home, we'd call as the mortgage company trying to let you know you get rejected for the mortgage because you have to submit ABC one, two, three or whatever. They gave us so much good information that these calls were, were, were golden. Right. And we knew how to spoof our phone number to actually look like it was coming for the bank. Yeah, I, we, we were that bad. Like we were able to make you feel like you're really being called by these people. So we decided to take it up a notch. And we ended up prank calling um, celebrities. We, we prank called Jennifer Lopez. We prank called uh, Mark Anthony. We prank called all kinds of people. So we, we made some good friends. And then we said, let's kick it up a notch. Let's go ahead and, and prank call government. And then we ended up prank calling the president of Argentina at the time. No one really cared, but it was cool. We prank called the president of Argentina. So we said, okay, who could we do next? And then we ended up prank calling the, the, the dictator of Venezuela at the time, Hugo Chavez. We, we, we prank called him. We got to him. We saved the recording. And during this time, this is when Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro were in cahoots. They were like besties. They were best friends, sharing socialism, communism, tips and tricks, all kinds of stuff. So what we ended up doing, we said, let's act as if, because Fidel Castro, I mean, the CIA literally tried to, you know, assassinate him. No one could get to him. And when we brought it up to people and said, hey, we want to prank off Fidel Castro, everyone laughed. Come on, you guys had your run. Relax, chill. Just, just keep doing what you're doing, but you're not going to get to him. Don't even bother. We said challenge accepted. So we grabbed Hugo Chavez's uh, phone call. We broke it up into parts. And we had this machine. It's called a 360 machine, which is basically you will program the buttons to place a certain sound part from whatever we recorded. So we, what we did was we ended up going ahead and acting as if he was on a bad line. It was like a three-way conference call. And one of the radio show jocks, Joe, he could do a Venezuelan accent. So he acted as if, because we just knew that uh, Hugo Chavez left Cuba, like just recently. So we said, uh, we, we called the city hall of Cuba and hey, we got Hugo Chavez on the line. Um, he just got back from Cuba and we have a very important national security matter and we left a briefcase and we need to get that briefcase as soon as possible and we we would add the the spanish words if you know what i mean so like we would like make it seem like more detrimental we need this briefcase we need it back in our hands if you know what i mean and then the people at the government were freaking out and they would just keep transferring us and transferring us hey this is lieutenant camille Lieutenant Camille, hey, and then we will keep pressing the buttons of Hugo Chavez. Uh-huh. See, si, yes, I hear you. Yes. Oh, give me a second, sir. We're, we're actually on the line with the with the with the government now. We're and the other party would hear Hugo Chavez in the background. So that's how we ended up making them feel like it was authentic. Sure enough, we kept on going up the chain of command all the way till we got to Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, he ends up saying, Yes, I know what you mean. And we will get on it and look for this briefcase as soon as possible. And then are you satisfied with my answer? And then Enrique, which is one with the, he was the one pressing the buttons. He says in Spanish, are you satisfied with the way you're treating the people of the Island? And then that's where Fidel Castro realized, wait a minute, hold on. This is not, this is not a, 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 what I thought it was. And then we said, you fell, you fell to our prank, just like other idiots, just like you. And then he gave us this colorful name in Spanish, which is Baricon Son, which is basically a bad word, but he added the word son at the end, S-O-N. So that's how we were able to get away with using that name on the radio. Me being the geek that I am, I went to, um, at the time it was networksolutions.com and I bought mariconson.com 
And then what we did, I said, guys, I got the call online. This news broke out worldwide. BBC, CNN, Fox News, everywhere. So everyone wanted to hear this call. And that's where my whole funnel world came into play. I built my first real funnel where you put your name and email address into the system. And then after you put your name and email address, you would get a real player audio link. So you can hear the call. And because of this little funnel, I ended up building a list of over 250,000 email addresses. And the station said, whoa, we can totally monetize this, Carlos. How would you like a job running our email marketing campaigns? You help us build the list. You throw in the ads in the emails and you get paid. At the time, it was like $2,000 a month. And me realizing now how much they were charging for these emails, I'm like, wow, I, I could have probably made a lot more. But that's how my whole lead generation funnel world, digital marketing world came into play because at that point, all the technology was still relatively new and only these enterprise companies were able to afford the software. And since I was already very well versed in code and understanding how to put it all together, I was basically one of the only people in the area that knew how to do it all. So I ended up building campaigns for Coca-Cola, Universal, Disney, a ton of them out there because they didn't have anyone to do it. And now that the software is more affordable, I, I kind of have an advantage. I, I was able to basically teach what I've learned throughout the years and kind of just show others kind of like what we're doing today on how to get it all done. So that way they can apply it to your business. Now that, I mean, we've got active campaign nowadays, we've got drip elementor. I mean, we've got so much software that's so easy to access at this point and it's not as complicated as it used to be. So now I'm able to kind of just bring people up to speed with how to do the things that only the, the major companies were able to do. And, and that's it. So, I mean, now I, I run, I run Miami marketer. I'm known as the Miami marketer here. Um, I, I, I build these campaigns for people. I teach them, I coach them, I consult them. And I also have a, a, a service, which is called the automation gorillas, which is basically a flat rate monthly service where you just send us the work. We build it and send it to you back in seven days. And it's an unlimited amount of automations that you, that you can send to us and we'll, we'll go ahead and crush it. So I got a team. I teach my team, I build with my team, and then we just get people launched and moving forward from there. So that's it. That's my story. What, I mean, I, I haven't been able to see the questions, there's comments or whatever. Uh, or I, I see Ronnie saying NSFW. Yeah, that name is NSFW, but the word S-O-N at the end made it SFW. So that's how we got away with it. Um, let's see oh, here. Oh. Yeah. What was that? Mariconson. Mariconson, that's what it was. Hold on, let me get my lacroix here. By the way, that little that little animal, that, that critter back there in the background is my boss. She runs my life. So luckily she might, she, I mean, you guys already saw her on the camera, but she goes ahead and makes sure that I'm working. So I wouldn't be surprised that she comes in again. So that's Phoebe and she runs my world. So, and I'm allergic to cats, go figure. So, all right. Any, any, what questions you guys have for me before we launch off? I mean, I can go ahead. I, I want to make this, this isn't, this isn't a presentation. This isn't a slideshow where I'm going to go ahead and kind of just walk you through this whole lecture thing. I am going to give you some visuals and explain to you what's going on, but by all means, I know questions come up. And if you're anything like me, if I don't ask it at that moment, I'm probably going to forget it. And I'm going to be like, damn, I had a good question too. Go ahead, ask it, put it in the chat. And I'll go ahead and, 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 and I'll try to answer it at that very moment. So please go ahead. Let's just have some fun. All right. So uh, Carlos, a lot of people are asking about landing pages. That was a big, in our introductions, I asked people what, you know, what they wanted answered today. And, and a big thing was landing pages. Uh, Ronnie put a couple out there as well that were good. So yeah. Okay. That'd be good to start with if you want. Good to go. Good to go. Okay. So, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to give you the foundation of what's working now when it comes to marketing, whether it's digital uh, you decide to do a traditional, whatever the case is, we're all going to marry it back to digital. However, the principles remain the same. So that way, whenever you're building a campaign, as long as you're following these, these principles, these fundamentals, you're likely to build some winning campaigns. Elementor is just one component of the entire thing, which is basically a software that makes it easy for you to build some landing pages that are smart and that they're easy to work with so that way you can capture the information or complete the objective that you're trying to complete all right so i see here ronnie landing pages conversions email conversions sm capture what's sm mean social media capture is that what that is 
SMS. Social media capture. I'm sorry. Social media capture. Okay, social media capture. You mean like getting likes, follows, like tweets? Is that what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, I was trying to say this uh, as far as um, I know where the topic is Elementor. So some Elementor links that you feel are money for social media input. I'm sorry. I'm a sailor. I'm a Navy guy. I know I need to talk slower for you. So things that are so things that are so things that are. I got a box of crayons. I got a box of crayons for Christmas for my dinner. Oh gosh! You know what I was say? <laughs> Just like a good uh, social media add-ins that you've seen on Elementor, yep. things that you've seen to help conversions of that nature. Yeah, yeah. Okay, as, as you can tell, Navy and the uh, Marine Corps, we don't get along at all. <laughs> My brother was my brother was a corpsman, ran with you guys. So I, I yeah, corpsman, they might as well be Marines because they wear the yes. same uniform. Just it's just Navy. So yeah, I mean the Navy was our, the Marine Corps taxis. So you know we have to have our respect. They're the Ubers for us. So we we need to get to places. So all right, thank you, Maureen. Okay, so let, let's get into it. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, and hold on, where is this? Zoom, zoom does things whenever it wants. Okay, so there's desktop, no, there's Chrome. Okay, so I'm gonna share Chrome. All right, so um, let me make the screen a little bit, a little bit easier to see. Okay, this is better for me. All right, so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna be talking about um, how to build a lead generation funnel with Elementor, and plus I'm gonna answer whatever questions you guys have, so that way I can give you as much information as possible to get you guys rocking and rolling. Okay, so Elementor is cool, but how do we make money? How do we go ahead and capture information so that way we can provide value either for our clients or for ourselves because we need to, at the end of the day, pay bills. And it all starts with making sure we get the right, the right message and right in front of the right people and then what they're seeing and what, what they need to do is easy for them to do. And Elementor is just a, a big component of that entire thing. So, okay, so let's do this. Before we go ahead and jump into building a landing page, I want to go ahead and, and kind of walk you through the biggest mistake everybody makes whenever they try to advertise online. And that is that everyone's tendency is to create an advertisement or a post to announce my ass rides in Navy equipment. That's funny. Marine muscles are required. Intelligence not expected. That's another one I heard. The, 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 the tendency of people is to go ahead and put their ad about their special offer on their page in hopes that someone's gonna say, yes, that, I, I wanna buy that, that's a great deal, let me jump on it. The problem with that approach is that you're asking someone that doesn't know you to make a commitment to you even before they've had a chance to know that you are actually worth their time, to even know that you can actually help them with their service or to even provide them value. So if I were to compare that to anything, that's like asking for marriage on the first date. Okay. It's just not, it's not going to work effectively because you have to earn trust. You have to show value. And then when the relationship is right is when you should ask for some type of commitment. So before we do that, let me kind of, you know what, let me draw on, on the whiteboard real quick. Let me put it into perspective for you. So, all right. So this is, I'm trying to do the whiteboard here, share screen, whiteboard, share. Okay, there it is. All right, so to put it into perspective, this triangle right here represents your market. This is everyone that could potentially buy from you. All right, let me erase this little thing right here. Now of your market, where is my, where is, okay, there it is. Of, your, of, the, of the market, this top part right here represents 3% of the market. And these people are people that are already looking for your services. And that's 3% right here. These people already know that they need your services and they just need to know where to put their credit card information because they already know what, what they need. So everyone's tendency is to want to go ahead and focus on the 3% because they're thinking, well, why would I want to waste my time or spend my energy or spend my money on people who are not interested in my services when I could just find someone who already is looking for my problem, for my solution for their problem. Now, that's, it's not a bad mindset. The problem is that everyone's thinking exactly the same way. So what ends up happening is that you end up you, you finding yourself in what's called a buyer's market, where in other words, there are a lot more sellers 
then there are buyers. And the only thing you can really do to stand out in a buyer's market is to essentially lower your prices. And there really is no growth strategy when your goal is to be the first one to race to the bottom of your pricing comp competition because you need the profit, you need the markup so that way you can grow your company. The good news is that there's this rest of the market right here, which is 97% of the market. And these are people that would buy from you. They're either unaware that they have a problem or they're unaware that a solution even exists to their problem. Now, the beautiful thing is that while your competition is focusing on 3%, they're not really focused on 97%. And you're not going to spend nearly as much money on targeting 97%. And the reason why is because with a value first approach, what will happen is that as you give them value, when they're ready to buy, you're likely to be the first person they're going to consider when they're going to make that purchasing decision. They're likely to do business with someone they've earned trust with than someone that they just saw a good ad for, right? And what I love about this approach is that when you're advertising content and then retargeting people who are consuming your content, platforms tend to give you a big break on advertising. So you get to maximize on those dollars. So you may end up spending a lot less than you would if you were to target someone that's already looking for a solution. Now it is, a, it is a little bit of a snowball effect because the snowball effect is where it starts off small. And then as it rolls down the, the mountain or the hill, it gets bigger and bigger. So eventually it does lead to a, a, a perpetual growth, but you got to build, you got to start from somewhere. And I always like to start building my campaigns based up at a 97 percentile. All right. And, I, and that's what I'm going to show you guys right now. Um, does that make sense? Is that, is that, uh, is that good to go? Okay. Good to go. So yeah, I'm, I'm seeing the thumbs up here. So now in order for us to build a solid campaign, let's go ahead and go back to this screen here. We have to first understand that there are seven stages that every customer goes through. And as long as you know what stage they're in, you increase your chances of writing messages that are relevant to that person. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is going to go through each one of those stages. All right. So let's go ahead and put a table here. Let's do eight and three. Okay. So why are you not doing this to me? Okay. There it goes. So these are the stages right here. So the first stage is called the suspect stage and a suspect is someone that is aware of their circumstances, but they're unaware that their circumstances have a problem. All right. So they're not going to be ready to make any type of purchasing decision. So if you try to pitch them at this point, they're most likely going to say, no, thank you. I don't need that, but they might need it. So don't even bother trying to pitch them at this point. Then you have what's called a potential lead. A potential lead is someone that now realizes they have a problem. So now they're like in a do it yourself problem solving mode. So these people would be willing to share their contact information in exchange for solutions to solving their own problem, but they're still not going to be ready for a pitch. All right. Then you have what's called a lead. A lead is someone that says, man, I, I can tell that, you know, that, that Oscar can actually help me with my problem. Let me see what Oscar is all about. Let me see what services he's offering. Let me ask him if he can, if he can give me a quick phone call to see if he can actually help me out. That person at that point is a lead. Now they're requesting information because they're interested in your services. All right. Then you have what's called a potential buyer, someone that knows how much it is, what it takes to start. We're just waiting for them to make that decision to buy. Then you have a buyer, someone that says, yep, here's my money. Take it. Go ahead and help me with my problem. All right. Then you have a repeat buyer. A repeat buyer, someone that wants to keep you on board, they'll keep giving you money in exchange for keeping the problem solved or solving additional problems. And then you have a fan, someone that is excited about you and they're willing to tell others about how great you are so that way they can help you grow and spread the word. So as long as you know what stage they're in, it's going to be easier to write messages that are relevant to them. All right. Make sense? Good to go? All right, cool. So now, how do you move someone from stage to stage? But, but most importantly, how do you move them in a way where they don't feel like you're trying to sell them something? Because if there's anything I learned about marketing and sales is that everyone loves to buy, 
but no one wants to be sold. So we got to find natural ways to make them feel like, man, this is a great idea. This is a no brainer. I got to jump on this opportunity. So that's why we have to have the right offers in place to help transition that person from stage to stage. And the first offer that we use to attract our suspects is called a lure. A lure is, is a piece of content that we use that doesn't require any type of opt-in. It doesn't require any type of commitment other than their time. And it, it's kind of like fishing. Like right before you go fishing, if you just throw out your fishing line, you may catch a fish, but most likely you're not going to catch a fish. Here's why. Because you don't know where the fish are at. So what do you do? You grab a bunch of fish food or a bunch of chum and you start throwing it in the water. Now you're going to start seeing all the fish coming. Now if you throw out your fishing line, you're more than likely to get catch a fish. This is the same exact concept. And the way I love to do this personally is with the, with the help of, of videos. I like to create content that answers questions. And I'm going to show you how I figure out what questions to create that I can start attracting my target audience and have them focusing on me. All right. Then we have what's called a free irresistible offer. A free irresistible offer is something that we use that excites the person to give us their email address. Now it's not necessarily just create an ebook and get their email address. It's got to excite them. It's got to make them feel like, wow, I, I got to take advantage of this opportunity because People back, I mean, not too long ago, hey, just create an ebook and you just build your email list. Yeah, that's been played out. People have caught on that. I don't want to get a bunch of spam. So they'll either give you a bogus email address, a fake email address, and they, if they want to get whatever it is. But if it's irresistible and you make it so that you really don't want to miss out on this, they're going to give you their good email address. All right. And as of right now, capturing their cell phone number is the new capturing their email address until marketers, we ruin it. So it's going to get ruined eventually. This is the way we are, but that's, what's going to happen. We got to make it irresistible. Now people have asked me, Carlos, how do I know if what I create is irresistible? And the simplest way I can put it is by ans answering yes to this next question. And the question is, if you decided to put a price on this free item, would people be willing to pay you for it? If the answer is yes, then it's irresistible. If the answer is no, I'm not saying that it won't work, but I'm saying that you're going to get a lot more no's of me. No, thank you. I don't want it before you get to that. Yes. All right. So the key is to make it as, irresist uh, as irresistible as possible. And I'm going to show you how to figure out if what you would, if what you created is, is worth uh, selling. Then you have what's called a gateway offer. I'm sorry, a foot in the door offer. A foot in the door offer is a way to virtually or, or physically get your foot in the door with that that lead. And this is usually done in a, a, with a low priced item. And the idea, and right now the sweet spot happens to be $7, $7, $8, $9. seems to be like a, a magic number for now until marketers ruin it, whatever. And what happens is if you can get someone to make a small purchase with you and you've given them an over delivery of value, it's been statistically proven that if someone buys from you once, you have a 60 to 70% chance that they're going to buy from you again. So this is just one way to speed up that buying behavior process with you. All right. The second benefit from the foot in the door offer is you may not make your first million or second million, whatever, through this step. However, if you do this right, if you, if you price it right and you give value, if it costs you $1 to acquire an email address, a $7 sale is going to help you acquire six more people into your funnel. So this is just one way so that you can done right, acquire customers at a profit because all you're doing is giving them something to buy up front. And then the system starts paying for itself. All you have to do is prime the pump. And as long as this product is worth it, you're going to see that this part right here is the secret sauce to building a winning funnel campaign. All right. The next part is called the gateway offer. Gateway offer is usually the bridge between your lower priced items and your main offer. This is usually like a phone call, a one-on-one -on -one phone call. With the, the idea is to basically introduce the main offer. This could be a webinar. It's meant to make that switch, that, that, that movement from the stage to the next stage. All right. Then you have what's called 
your main offer, which I'm not going to go too far into that. That's what we're trying to sell. Then you have what's called your profit booster. Profit booster is exactly what the name says. It's meant to help you boost profit. So that way you can increase your customer's lifetime value. And then you have your referral loyalty offer. It could be one or both. And the objective for this step is for referrals is to help you incentivize people to help them spread the word for you and loyalty it incentivizes them to continue doing business with you. So that the idea is that if you have these two columns, if you have these two columns set and you understand what your offers are for each stage, then you've got yourself a solid natural sales process. The natural sales process is to help you determine what offer am I going to use at what stage and what language am I going to use based off of what I know about this, um, this audience member. I'm trying to find the, there we go. The natural sales process. Okay. Makes sense. So this covers, this is the foundation of any conversion campaign. If you're going to be building any type of landing pages, what kind of landing page are you building? Are you building for a suspect, a potential lead, a lead, a, 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 a buyer, a repeat buyer, etc. Same thing goes with emails. Same thing goes with ads. That's where we get the power of retargeting that we get, we get the power of email marketing the power of text messaging. You want to make sure you're sending the right relevant message to that person. Not everyone's going to be kept. No one can be treated the same way. A suspect can't be treated the same way as a potential buyer. You have to make sure your language makes sense for that contact. Make sense. Good to go. Okay. Good to go. All right. My son is, is coming. Yeah. The what? No, no, no brown bed. Sorry guys. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how I figure out how to get the lure and I'm going to show you how I get the free irresistible offer. You guys should already know what your foot in the door offer is, or you guys may know what your gateway or main offer is. So I'm just going to focus on the two hardest parts. And I'm going to simplify that for you guys. So that way you don't have to get stuck reinventing the wheel. And then I'm going to map out how to build out these funnel components. So that way you know what pages you should be building whenever you're, you're, you're setting up your funnels. Okay. So now let's talk about the lure. The lure is something that we use to attract our target audience. And I like to do this with the power of creating content that I know people want. Now, how do I know they want that? Well, here's a little shortcut. There's a, a website that I use. Actually, before I tell you about the website, everyone obviously knows about Google. So let's go, for example, if you go to Google and you type in here, <laughs> I, I was looking for a, 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 the, the Popeye's chicken sandwiches I got. It's delicious, by the way. So let's say PlayStation 5. That seems to be like a thing here. So PlayStation 5, I haven't pressed enter yet. And Google's already given me some auto suggestions. On, on the PlayStation 5 term. Okay, Google, stop. I'll tell you what, man, CIA. So I haven't typed anything other than PlayStation 5, and I'm already getting a lot of these auto suggestions. These auto suggestions usually mean that this is what other people are searching for in my area related to that search phrase. So this is pretty valuable, but how do I take it to the next level? Let me just go ahead and press enter. So if you press enter, Obviously, you get to see all these things. You get to see articles. If you keep scrolling down, you're going to get this little box that says, people also ask, how much will the PlayStation 5 be? Where can I buy a PlayStation 5? Now, this is the gold right here. This is what people are actually searching for. So this is pretty cool. So let me go ahead and click on that. How much will PlayStation 5 be? All right. Let me go ahead and copy this. And if I go ahead and type it in here, let's see what I get. So now I'm getting more information and people also ask, is the PlayStation 5 coming out in 2020? How can I get a PlayStation 5? Additional questions that follow up, but this is time consuming. I need a shortcut. I don't have time to waste. That's where I go to alsoasked.com. Alsoasked.com for now is free until marketers like me ruin it. And, and they keep having little meetups and telling everyone about it. So enjoy it now before it, it's, it's gone. So if you go ahead and, and choose your location for, for now, I'm just gonna put United States and I'm gonna type in PlayStation 5. All right, now what will happen is that every question that is that usually linear, it's like an illogical linear form, 
I get the questions in order of the way they be searching. So what this means is that I will create a video answering that question. And if I need another video to create, I'm going to the next one. Will PS4 games work on PS5? That's the next video. What about that? How much of a PlayStation 5 cost? So this is how I basically come up with the ideas to create my videos. So that way I don't reinvent the wheel. All right. Thank you. I'm going home. You did it. That's all I needed. I'm ready. You got it? Thank you. I'm <laughs> That's your nugget? <laughs> now you can go to sleep, man. Oh, shoot. So, yeah, look, that, that's powerful right there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just go ahead and figure out what your target audience wants by tapping in a key phrase, and that's how you're going to create your content. Now, here's a trick, all right? If you're good, if you're good with video, like, like if you feel comfortable recording a quick little video, record the video, and you can go to a website. After you record it, go to temi.com. Temi.com allows you to upload your video and it will transcribe your entire audio for the video. And what that does for you is that now you're able to create a blog post from that video. It's a kind of like a transcript, like a, like show notes almost. So you've already covered video and now you can do text. So that can help with SEO. All right. So the lure video, Steve, you got it. Good. <laughs> awesome. So that video right there, you can repurpose that same video to serve as SEO content and it's video. And if you do it, if you do it in a way where you, you're speaking it, if, if you don't have to watch the video, you can extract the audio and put it as a podcast episode as well. So you're covering three pieces of content in one and you can embed the episode of the podcast in the same Elementor page for blogs, upload the video to YouTube, upload the video to Facebook and embed the, the text, the text transcript in the post as well. There's another website that I use. If you want to take it there, it's called Zubtitle. Zubtitle, hold on, Zubtitle also transcribes the, the audio. However, it puts the subtitles in the video on the bottom. So if you want to use that same video, it'll, it, it, you can actually, you, you can see in the, in the example here, you can go ahead and upload this video to Facebook because most of the time Facebook videos start off on mute. And a lot of people tend to like to watch uh, videos on, on mute, but if they can see the transcriptions, they're consuming the content and that's super powerful. So you're just making that lure so much easier to consume. You're covering people who prefer podcasts, um, video, and they can read. All right. They prefer to read. All right, so that's how I go ahead and create my lore content. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just go ahead and go nuts. If you're trying to figure out what people are liking right now, you can go to buzzsumo.com. Buzzsumo lets you find out the lures that people are already sharing with others. So if I go here and type in PlayStation 5, this is not a free site, by the way. They do limit the free version. But look, PlayStation 5 console finally revealed 1.8 million total engagement. That's a very powerful article. So I know that people care for this content. So I may want to use this video to get a little bit more information on how I want to create my lure, you know? So this gives me tips. This gives me a way to not have to worry about trying to figure out how to position my content, right? If you're ever stuck, look at what others are doing and then do your own version of the same thing. Okay. So that's how I do my lure. The second part, is all about the free irresistible offer. How am I going to convince someone to give me their email address so that way I can follow up with them? And for this exercise, I go to a little website called Amazon. Amazon. If you go to Amazon and you go to the books section right here, let's just type in PlayStation 5. Let's see what we get. So if I go to PlayStation 5 right over here, uh, okay. This is interesting. The perfect guide in having your own PS5 game and more thing to know about it. It's selling for $11.99, but let's see. Let me keep going down. All new PlayStation 5 user guide, newbie to expert in two hours. The essential guide to Sony's incredible gaming device. Okay. Wait a minute. So if I open this one right here, the reason I'm looking at this is number one, it's being sold. Okay. It's being sold for $7.99. I also don't want to reinvent the wheel. So I want to see what they're talking about. And most of the time when you go inside these books, they have a table of contents that you can use as your guide to create your own version of the same free irresistible offer. 
So this is how I avoid inventing, reinventing the wheel. Now, PlayStation 5 is still really, really new. So maybe this is not the best example. Um, I want, let's say, for example, buying a home, buying home, this topic everywhere. So this one, buying a home, don't let them, don't let them make a money out of, don't let them make a monkey out of you. Okay. Let's go with no low essential guide to buying your first home. Okay. That was cool. The reason why I like this one is because it has 132 reviews and of the reviews is 4.6 out of five. Now this information, I'm not saying to copyright infringe, but I'm going to tell you right now, what they're not going to tell you something that is proprietary for the most part. If you're in the business, you probably know everything that's in this book. All you got to do is create your own version of the same thing. I'm not saying to create a 300 page book. You can create like a checklist or a blueprint or a what you need to know guide of basically the same exact thing. All right. And leverage this content to your advantage. Also leverage their the feedback from people. Find out what people like and find out what they hate. So that way you can either include it or make sure you don't include it. Make sense? Is that... Good to go. So we haven't even talked about building pages because at this point you guys already know how to build pages. You guys just need to know how to structure your campaigns. So that way the pages you build have a purpose. All right. So, uh, uh, what questions do you guys have for me so far on that? All right, man, I'll take your, uh, well, let me go, let me go to the questions thing. I, I I'm just looking at the gallery. I see chat here. All right. Good to go. <laughs> Damn. These are good stuff right here. I love these chats. Mic drop, Carlos. What is your cash app? Oh, I, I, uh, I, I don't, you're I don't. Dealing it, you're dealing it right now, man. <laughs> you're dealing it up. Uh, you're helping me out because what you're talking about is what uh, Russell Brunson calls the hack. You're just hacking it. That's what you're saying. Don't hacking. reinvent the wheel. Just right. make sure you hack it and get it done. The table of contents idea is sheer brilliance. The, uh, the. Um, endless cycle going into going into the what people ask section which i've seen probably about a million times i never thought about weaponizing that section that's brilliant <laughs> i know tyler's over there like come on man let's keep going but no that's the stuff i'm talking about so yeah happy scribe i actually love happy scribe i got that as an app sumo deal yes app sumo um, deal and then we use that's how i was thinking about how to convert it but you just told me what to use it i bought it i knew i would use it and well, I if you're using happy for. scribe you don't need subtitle. I'll tell you that right now because I use it. I also use a software called Flixier, which is also another AppSumo deal, which allows me to um, edit videos in the cloud. So I have a, an assistant in the Philippines where they don't have like the best computers out there, but I need her to edit videos. So she uses Flixier to edit the videos and it's like a nice, we have a nice little workflow going on. So that AppSumo has been very, very, very effective for my business. I've bought some duds, but for the most part, I've bought some really good stuff that's that's paid itself over and over. Um, okay, J Josiah asks, how much time do you typically spend on creating your, your irresistible offer? Should I expect 10 hours? Josiah, um, here's my recommendation. Okay, here's another one. Here's another hack for you. Okay, so there's a website called Quillbot. All right, Quillbot is a paraphrasing tool. I can't believe I'm sharing this. Okay, Quillbot is a paraphrasing tool. You can go ahead and grab a blog article <laughs> and you can go to Quillbot and Quillbot will paraphrase the entire thing. And then hire someone on Fiverr to make sure that it makes sense. And you can spend basically 10 minutes <laughs> creating your free irresistible offers. Okay, Josiah, don't waste time. Focus on what you are, are your time is better spent on, okay? So uh, <laughs> I wish I would have known about Quillbot when I was in college, but um, <laughs> it was, it was, this is a total game changer because I just, I just go ahead and just look at what's the most, what's the most effective. There's a website also. Um, it's called, oh, shoot, I don't have it at the top of my head. It's a website that has basically a bunch of lead magnets already. Um, I know that I use a website called idplr.com. And PLR stands for private label rights. And usually what this means is that an author created something that they're okay with you reselling as your own or, um, or, or giving it away for free, depending on what their, what their agreement is. So IDPLR is my little directory of, let's say if I go here to real estate, I type in real estate, 
it shows me what other people have already created and I can either use it as a blog article or as an actual content, like a foot in the door offer. So that's how I don't reinvent the wheel. I don't spend too much time on creating free irresistible offers. I just go ahead and, and find something here. I'll go on Fiverr, hey, do me a favor, create the graphics for this, make this more original and uh, send it back to me whenever you're ready. And, and that's it, I just go from there, okay? So I, I bought the lifetime deal for this website. So this website has paid for itself over and over, especially for my clients. Hey, you need a, you need a free resistible offer? I already got something, is this cool? I'll have it recreated for you, done and move on. So we just go from there. All right, Josiah, uh, I think I answered your question. If you can give me a thumbs up on that one. So, yeah, Noel, should we say again? Yeah, that's fantastic. I appreciate right, cool. it. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so uh, Noel says, should we be concerned about video quality? What, what, do, you, what do you mean, Noel? Like, like uh, the, the way it looks on camera or what, what, what are you referring to? Yeah, so if we have imagery that's going along with these subtitles, um, should we really be concerned about how I am not a computer tech, I mean, I'm sorry, video tech person. So it's like, oh, I, I'm talking, but I see people with like videos in their bedrooms or in their bathrooms. And I'm like, ugh, that looks a little cheesy. I don't want to look like I'm just sitting in my bathroom making up a, you know, skincare tutorial. Right, that's, a good, but that's a good question. Good question. So th th there are people that, that tell me the same thing. There's sometimes that they're feeling being on camera and for the most part, they're just not feeling being on camera. So this strategy I kind of adopted from like Goldcast. Goldcast, what they do is they grab an audio from a motivational speaker and then they put like stock videos that represent what the message is in the audio. So you can go to a website like on Fiverr said, look, this is the audio I want you to use. Feel free to use whatever stock videos you want that represent the audio. And that could be your lore content. Okay. You can record yourself uh, uh, reading off a top 10, the top 10 things to do before you buy your PlayStation five and you record number one, make sure you're dealing with a reputable website. The reason why is because you don't want to get ripped off. There's people out there that are scamming others for money. Number two, whatever you're reading it. The transcription is there and you can have someone on Fiverr go ahead and, 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 and just get that done. I personally use a website called videohuskies.com and they are a flat rate monthly monthly flat rate company that I just send them the what I want done and in, in 24 to 48 hours they send me the video back for approval and then I, I move on to the next one so it's unlimited videos and everything so I don't have enough I do have an affiliate link I'll send it to you guys if you, if you decide, decide to go with it that'll be very helpful but I use this as a part of my thing because I don't want to keep finding another video person so they, they have one flat rate and the, look at the pricing, man. The pricing is like stupid for, if you want them to be able to work three days a week, it's three thirty eight per month. I, I got the five days per week package, which is 500 bucks a month. One video person will cost you maybe 80 to $150 per video. These guys are on limited videos. So they, it, they're solid. All right. So that could help you out if you're not, if you're not comfortable that day or ever recording your video. Does that answer your question? Noel? Absolutely. Thank you. Is it Noel or Noelle? No, it's Noel. Thanks. Okay. I'm, I'm infamous for butchering names. So, all right, good to go. Um, what is the name of the website to edit videos in the cloud? That website is called flixier.com. And as of right now, they, I think they have a really good deal going on and it's an annual price. Um, all right. For if you do $10, okay. Annual, if you do $8 a month, this is what you, what you have. And, and honestly, you could just share this account with anyone in your team and it doesn't really matter. Unlimited projects, whatever the case is. And that that's why 88, $92 a, a year, a year. Come on. You can't, you can't go wrong. That's better than having to spend $50 on the Adobe creative cloud. And you're not having to worry about doing the videos because you can hire someone anywhere in the world and they'll be able to edit a video for you. All right. I lucked out. I got the app sumo deal. So I, I have, um, I got a pretty sweet deal. I'm, 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 pre I'm like an early adopter. I have an addiction to AppSumo. I'm, I, I mean, it could be drugs, you know, but I, it's AppSumo for me. So I, I go ahead and I do my AppSumo thing. All right. So the, Annette, that was your question. Sarah Chung, would you mind repeating the cloud base? Oh, okay. There you go. Bam. Ronnie, I think the most important thing he said, I'll source AppSumo crack. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I love it, man. 
Okay, cool. Damn, we're running out of time. Time flies, man. Okay, good to go. So I gave you guys a, a few things here and there. Let, let me show you what the funnel build out looks like. Let's pretend that we're going to do it for a real estate agent, I guess. Or is, I mean, you guys have an idea Like I, I can create a, a, the best funnel flow for a specific industry if you guys have something in, in mind. Hey, why not photography? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, what kind of photography? Carlos. For an immigration attorney. let's just do let's just do portrait photography It'd be easy portrait photography okay, easy. okay. oscar you said I, something immigration attorney oh oscar i'm gonna have to go with ronnie first <laughs> immigration attorney is a good one i know i know that one that's a tough one immigration is actually really good for chicago miami texas california so dc so all right let, let's do a portrait, actually, but this could actually work for both, honestly. But let me let me go ahead and, and why is this taking so long? All right. Come on, baby. Let's do this. This tool right here that you're about to see, uh, you've been seeing, but it's been kind of bugging. I'm using my white label version. Maybe that's the problem. The name of the website is called marketplan.io. And this is my blueprinting tool for whenever I work with the client. Very powerful tool here because it, it, it does allow you to also not only build the funnel blueprint for people, but it also gives you a tracking code that you can install on all your pages. And this will track the entire performance of the, the funnel, clicks, everything. So you could basically send a client to this white label version of your page and they get to see the data that's happening with their funnels through your market plan. It, it's, it's like a bird's eye view of how the campaign is performing. If it decides to load up, if it doesn't, I got a backup plan. If it doesn't, I got a backup plan, market plan. Let's do this. All right, market plan. You're making me look bad and, and, and I'm live on TV. All right. It's not going to have a market plan. Let's do my other software. And that is Miro. Miro. All right. Hold on a second. I apologize. Let me. Let me get Miro going. I got to log in. Carlos. Man, luckily for password managers, because I don't know my passwords at all. I would be so easily hackable if I just use the same password over and over. Um, it's on board. There it goes. All right. So I'm going to log in here. Try, let's try this one more again. All right, good to go. All right, you see this? Yes, one password is, it, yeah, it is the best, in my opinion, it is the best password manager. I've used LastPass also, is the most reliable out of all that I've used. And since I have my team, it's been very easy to, for me to share passwords with people without exposing the password and easily removing people from it without having, and it's very secure. So, all right. Um, so what you're seeing here is, an, is one of my backup uh, blue, blue printing tools that I use whenever I'm trying to communicate to a client how a funnel is going to get built out. So let's go ahead and pull, let's do this one right here. All right. So first thing is first, we got to attract our target audience, right? And I love using Facebook ads. All right, Facebook ads, and I love to do it with Facebook video. And the reason why, and I'm gonna go a little bit over if it's okay with you guys. I mean, it's a little bit past nine o'clock, but yeah, go I, ahead. I won't take up, I won't take up too much of your time. Mike, good to go? Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, keep okay. going as long as you want. All right, good to go. So I prefer Facebook video, and the reason, the main reason why is not only is Facebook the one of the most mature. On social media advertising platforms but when you use video and you upload your video directly on facebook facebook gives us the superpower of being able to retarget those who have watched 50 percent or more of the video so if you're creating a three minute lure video and somebody's watching a minute and a half to more than that that person is interested in your content so that's someone i'd rather focus on and you're probably going to end up spending maybe two cents for the highly engaged person so it's most very cost effective. So I love to do a, a Facebook video lure ad 
to attract my target audience. All right. So let's say portrait for, for portrait uh, um, interest. Uh, so let's say a brand new parents that want to take pictures of their baby. I create a video that says the top 10 things to do when taking, taking pictures of your newly born, your newborn, even if you're not a professional photographer. And that's a top 10 little video there. Right. All right. So that video will go ahead and a, a capture their attention. At the end of the video, although the video is about content, I will end the video with something like, listen, if you're really serious about taking great pictures, even without a photographer, we've put together this ultimate checklist to make sure you have everything you need to get started. Just click the link to get started. Gotcha. And that will link them to your opt-in page, right? So that's what this icon is right here. And now we're going to go ahead. Let's just put it right over here. So this lure video is not meant to push the opt-in page, but it's like a stealth close. It's kind of like a stealth introduction. Oh, by the way, if you're really serious about it, download this guide. All right. But that's not the main objective. The main objective is watch the video. At the end of that video, they go to the opt-in page. Then they're taken to a thank you page slash sales page. And that page usually sells them on the first step. It could be that foot in the door offer. And I'm going to go ahead and use this icon right here. And this bad boy is your sales, is your sales page slash thank you page. All right. And then of course, if they're really excited to move forward, let's, let, let's do it. Let's, let's keep it simple and let's make it, <clears throat> Hey, why don't you do a schedule a one-on-one -on -one phone call with a, a photographer and maybe I could give you a quote, a very special offer for your, for your portraits. That's what that sales page does. And then after that, it'll link them to your calendar page. The calendar page is crucial because it allows you to not have to worry about playing the, the, uh, the negotiation game, the, the, the negotiation game of when's a good time for you. All right. The calendar will go ahead and just make it. Here's my, uh, my availability. Let's get started. And then you have your confirmation page, which confirms that the appointment has been set. This is very similar to the immigration attorney. The immigration attorney is a top 10 things to do to in increase your chances of not getting deported. I don't know, whatever. Uh, you can do something like that. By the way, if you're really serious, here's a checklist. Click here to download the checklist to get started. At the end, hey, immigration is very, very tough. Well, it, could be, it could be like trying to walk on a minefield. Why don't you schedule a one-on-one -on -one discovery call? with an immigration attorney to help you point you in the right direction um, with, uh, with, your, with the process. And then they click on their calendar, they book in a calendar appointment, then they're sent here. In a perfect world, this is what someone's gonna do right away. But it's not gonna happen like that, right? So what's gonna happen behind the scenes? Number one, after they've opted in, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna be added to an automation sequence and you guys are in Chicago. So my favorite automation software is active campaign, active campaign is in uh, Chicago. So in case you didn't know that I'm an active campaign certified consultant, highly recommend them. All right. The funnel elementor connects directly to active campaign and that information will go ahead and trigger an email. And that email will go ahead and give them access to the download page. And you'll notice that there's no way to get to that download page other than from that email. And that is done by design because I don't want to reward bad behavior, intentional or not. If, you, if it's an irresistible offer, I want to make sure you give me a good email address. If you want to be even more effective, get their cell phone number so that way you can text it to them. And you, you, you know you're going to get them into your system. All right. And then they can access the file right here. So that's how you're going to go ahead and make sure that they're going to gain access to that file that you promised them. Now from that first email, there's going to be a PS. If you're serious, I got this special uh, check, check out the special message for everyone that's serious about taking the best pictures of their newborn or click here to take a, uh, to listen to the special message for people who don't who want to avoid getting deported. Right. That's the PS of that particular email. That email is not designed to be only about the, PA, the, the, the sale. It's supposed to be about getting them to click the download button. We need them to click. 
we need to increase our engagement score. But by the way, if you're interested in this, click here to move forward. Also, the download page can link to that same page, that sales page, and that PDF can have a link that takes them to that sales page. All right. So that is how we're going to have more ways to increase our chances of getting that person to the next step in your funnel. Right? So this is suspect to convert them to potential lead, convert them into a lead. And then ultimately afterwards, trying to connect them into a, a, uh, a main offer, a uh, potential buyer buyer. All right. Now what happens if they don't move forward, if you have the right automation software, you can leverage email marketing automation that will remind them to book that appointment. Let me kind of make this covered in a line right here. So if they didn't book, if you have a, a smart automation system that knows they didn't book, then you're going to have this bad boy. These data lines represent this happens behind the scenes. And each one of these emails, I do, I like to do things in threes. And if you don't book the first time, I'm not going to assume you're not interested, but knowing how, how life could get in the way people get easily distracted. I want to give you at least like three reminders to get you to move forward to the next step. All right. And then after that, if you don't move on, then I'm going to add you to some type of like nurture sequence that maybe eventually down the road, I'll just keep sending you blog content, other lure content until you're ready to buy. All right. But what happens if they never actually opted in from the lure? That's where we use retargeting. If they didn't opt in, but they did consume the video content, that's someone I do want to retarget because you have consumed my content. And I'm going to try to bring you back into my funnel right over here. All right. So that's a retargeting ad, but it doesn't hurt to do a cold ad as well. Okay. So that th this one right here will be a cold ad. I, I didn't put the labels here. Um, maybe I could just do it real quick. I, I don't think I'm gonna have enough time, but you, you'll have this recording, but this is like a retargeting ad. This would be a cold ad to drive them to opt in for that checklist. All right. And then if they've landed on the thank you page, but they didn't book, then we're going to go ahead and try to retarget them. Hey, don't forget to book that appointment with me. Let's get started. And that's how you leverage retargeting with that. Okay. So that's essentially what a, 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 a funnel would look like covering the traffic component, retargeting component, the funnel pages and the email sequences in between. So that way you're covering different ways to make that process more natural for that contact. And since you're leveraging retargeting and all these different sequences, the right message should be, should be sent to that person based off of what they're doing and what they're not doing. Like if they land on the calendar page, but they don't book, like they don't land on this page, that's almost like an abandoned cart like behavior. So that's why you want to retarget them to bring them to the next step. Right? So, okay, let me see what you, what, what, what's going on here. So Ronnie, is that direct sales email or nurturing sequence timing on the reminder emails? Okay. So these emails right here, if it's a very sensitive topic, like immigration, Hey, do you don't want to get deported? Let's try to get you. Uh, um, maybe I could do like every, every one or two days. I'm going to try to be a little bit more, more aggressive with that. If it's a portrait two days, first, maybe one day, then wait two days then wait three days. You know, I I'd spread it out because it's not a dire emergency. It's kind of like uh, an another one. If plumbing, if you're, if, or, or insects and you have an issue with ants, you're needing to make a decision right away. So I may even be a little bit more aggressive and do multiple in a day. So it depends on the urgency of solving the problem. Okay. Um, all right, good to go. Uh, Ramon, you said HubSpot CRM, not active campaign. Does Elementor play along well with it? So um, I don't believe uh, uh, um, HubSpot has a direct connection with Elementor, but there is a Zapier integration uh, with Elementor. And what that means is that Zapier will be the duct tape that connects Elementor and HubSpot. HubSpot's pretty cool, um, but the CRM is free. So if you're using a free version, you're not going to get the automation component with it. You'd have to use something like Active Campaign. Active Campaign starts at $15 a month, and you can get some smart behavior driven automation power with that one. 
Um, okay. Uh, what does cold ad mean? Cold ad means it is an ad that, that the person has not consumed any content from you at all. This would be the first instance that they see something from you. A warm ad is that they've, they've been exposed to you some, sometime before, and now you're just trying to retarget that person to do something else. So that's the difference between cold and, and uh, warm ad. Um, let's say, um, okay, cool. Yeah, Tyler already answered that question. Sorry, Tyler, I didn't move forward. Ronnie, yeah, the icons are dope. I got it from Funnel Flows. I bought them when they were selling them individually. So I, I'm some old guy, you know me. Um, Sarah, are you an enterprise plan or a active campaign in order to do all the automation? You do not need the enterprise plan to do these automations. You can start with the light plan and that's $15 a month. If you want to leverage more stuff like lead scoring and um, additional like powerful items that you don't normally need at the beginning, then yeah, you would upgrade to like a plus plan and grow from there. But even the plus plan is great for, for a lot of people. So you do not need enterprise level uh, at all. Uh, Sarah Chung, um, hold on. Do you need active campaign? Can we do the same sequence on Elementor? You cannot do any sequences with Elementor. Elementor is only the pages that load up in the browser. Um, so you'd have to embed con like the calendar on an Elementor page. You put the content in the Elementor page. You put the form in Elementor page, but that data has to get sent to some type of like autoresponder software. So Elementor is just what you build that will load on, on the browser. So it doesn't build sequences. It just supports the sequences by capturing information and, and tagging people based off of the pages that person visits. Um, all right. So Sarah Chong asks, is active campaign better than convert kit in what way? So I believe it's better than convert kit. Number one, I, I feel like the support is a lot stronger with active campaign, active campaign. Also they they pride themselves on what they call bring your own technology. So in other words, they've made it so that you can basically connect it with anything that allows APIs. So that's why I love it because even if a software isn't meant to specifically talk to active campaign, active campaign has opened the door to let you be creative with it. So that means you can literally connect Elementor, although there is an active campaign connected to it, but if you don't want to, you can use the webhook version of it. And the reason why that's powerful is that if you have the power or the resources to create really creative stuff, active campaign will most likely support it. ConvertKit, if they didn't, it's kind of like the, the app store on Apple. Unless Apple approves of it, it's not going to be allowed for anyone in the marketplace to download it. Active campaign, you can go ahead and run roam free and build whatever it come, whatever you want to do. So that's why I feel like it's better. Um, even for someone that's not as advanced, I feel that active campaign has a smaller learning curve than a lot of the other software and it can grow with you. So that's why I, that's some of the reasons why, and I can go into about other stuff as well. Um, let's see here is using WP fusion and fluent CRM. Uh, oh, I'm using WP fusion and fluent. I've never used Flu fluent CRM. Um, I've had clients that use WP fusion. I think WP fusion is, is awesome. They, they're, they're very automation friendly. So they're, they're solid on that one. And that's like a whole different level. Um, Google ads, powerful or no Google ads are very powerful, but they're very expensive. And I'd rather use my money on somewhere where I feel that I'm gonna get more for my dollar. Google ads, the reason why they're so expensive is that people are Googling and they're Googling for answers because of a problem they're already aware of. That's why Google charges you a premium. Whether you convert that lead or not, they're gonna charge you $48 for that click, $28 for that click. So it, unless you're like a personal injury attorney where the sale is likely to be three, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, you may not be willing to spend the $48 a click. You know what I mean? Um, you, or, or you have to find some really solid, like long tail keywords. So, but Google is not the worst. What I rather do is use Facebook to attract them, but then I can use Facebook retargeting, YouTube retargeting, Google remarketing. And now I'm not spending as much money compared to someone trying to do search engine marketing. So that's how I would, I, I prefer to use it, but depending on the, the industry, 
determines which route to go. So uh, I, it's not my first, my first uh, go-to for it because most people don't really want to spend that type of money anyways, unless they have a massive budget they have to spend. Um, okay. So for bartending schools, Google ads are super powerful. Yes, because people are searching for that problem, uh, for the solution for the problem, because no one's just stumbling upon uh, bartending schools unless they know they want to go to bartending school. Now, the Facebook route, you can target people interested in mixing on, on, on alcohol and create a top 10, the top 10 mixed drinks you can do, even if you're not a bartender. And then, you know, that, that's how you go ahead and you create that video. And now you know that person's interested. All right. So let's see here. Um, uh, Pizza got, or can Elementor Pro do sales funnel? Okay. So Sarah Chung, can Elementor Pro do sales funnels? Yes, but. One of the powerful things about sales funnels, especially with click funnels, is that not only does it capture money with like the credit card information, but where, where click funnels really shines the most is the ability to do what's called one click upsells and downsells and bump offers. And what that means is you have an order form. The user puts their credit card information in there. After that transaction is successful, usually the next page will be like, wait, before you go, we got this one special offer. All you got to do is click on yes. The person doesn't have to put their credit card information again. That increases the conversion rate and you're likely to get a second sale. Most cart softwares do not do that. ClickFunnels is one of the leaders that do that. So now to answer your question, Elementor out of the box cannot do that. But of course, me being the geek that I am, let me share my screen again. And if you want to let, if you want to build some, some sales funnels with Elementor, um, where is this here? Okay. Let me go ahead and share this screen. If you want to build sales funnels with Elementor, there's a software called Cartflows. Cartflows.com is a, is a plugin that adds on to WooCommerce that adds the functionality of one click upsells, down sells, bump offers, and it's unlimited. And what ClickFunnels costs you $97 a month, these people right here, or $297 a month, depending on the plan the you go with, these people, you spend $299 for the year, and you can build up to 30, uh, you can use it for 30 sites. Now, here's their thing. There really is, a, let's say you don't renew for the year. You, you're done. You can still use the software. You just no longer have access to their support line. So you can actually just use this in place of click funnels and you're good to go. I got lucky and I got the lifetime license. So I do this. Now, how do you use this? You install Elementor, you install WooCommerce and CarFlows, and that gives you the ability to build all these cool funnels that you normally would see with uh, click funnels right over here. So just like any other funnel, we'll click up sales, down sales, bump offers, whatever. So that's how you use, they, they work with Divi. They work with Gutenberg blocks. They work with Elementor. So they have a, a wide array of design of uh, even Beaver, uh, Beaver builder is, is another one as well. So it's awesome. I use it for my funnels as well. In fact, I, I got off there. I love click funnels, but I no longer need click funnels. I use this instead for a lot of my client stuff and for my stuff. All right. So that was, that was, uh, that was Sarah Chung. Okay. And what else we got here? Um, okay, cool. Steve, you got that. Uh, thanks people. What do we use to create? Okay. Landing pages. What was the icon software you use? All right. So I, the software is called Miro, but I purchased the, the icons from this guy right here, Funnel Flows Icon. Uh, I don't know if they're still selling it. I got, I got lucky. I don't know if they're still selling it, but this is the actual software that what they ended up doing is that they made their own little mapping software and the same icons you saw I was using, they use it for their funnels. All right. And you can get started for free. And, and if, you, if building funnels is important for your business, you're gonna need something like this anyways. I prefer using market plan for now because um, not only did I get a lifetime deal, but um, it, it, it does have a project management component in there for my team. They get to, I, I get to keep track of tasks in there. So that way 
we know what gets needed to get built right within that market planning uh, software. So, um, okay, good to go. So, um, I, I'm not gonna waste your time on building Elementor pages. I gave you guys a nice little flow. I, I'll, I'll send this this, uh, this blueprint that I created to Mike. Just make sure you send Mike, uh, um, I don't know how you, Mike, I, I get everyone's information. So that way you can send it out to everyone, the blueprint. Um, I also send the screenshot of like the stages as well. And the websites like also ask.com um, and Amazon and, and you have the video recordings. That way you can bundle this entire thing for, um, for your visitors. So any other questions you guys, Oh, Mike, I contacted, but yeah, I'll make sure Mike, I'll send, Mike, can I send it to you? You pass it off yeah, to everyone. Absolutely. Yep. Cool, man. And, and here's a shameless plug. I run automation gorillas. And like I said, these are, this is the flat rate version of just building out automations. You don't want to deal with automations. So all you got to do is send them my way and me and my team will build it out and we'll get it done within seven days and you move on to your next project and we just do it over and over until we renew for the next month. There's no contract. There's a 14 day trial. You want to give me a shot to see if I know what I'm doing. That way we can get rocking and rolling. And, and that's it. This is an easy, an easy cost for you. So that way you know how much it's going to cost to build basically any type of automation for any of your businesses. So that's, that's my plug. If you know anyone that can help me or th that knows that knows with the power of automation, this is a great little place you can send them to and that'll be very helpful for me. So that's it. Any, anything else you can reach me and my, I'll send Mike my info and we'll keep in touch. Thank you, Carlos, everybody. Round of applause, virtual round of applause for Carlos. <laughs> Does anybody have Thank any you. other questions for Carlos before we finish up here? We've got about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, Hi, yeah this is Noel. Um, this was awesome, first of all, so thank you so much. But I'm just trying to figure out, so the funnels are really more to attract new clients, um, but in that, how do you then keep them re-engaged? Like, I, I'm in the beauty business, right? So Brazilian waxing is my, like, number one thing. Am I trying to get new clients? Yes. Um, but I have a booking software that's sort of already set up where they can go in and automatically book the service that they want to do. So I'm just now I'm like, oh my God, do I have to revamp everything to integrate a sales funnel into that or click through funnel into that? Um, or am I just overthinking it? Okay. Well, that's, don't feel bad. I overthink so much. You're actually in a good spot. You're not really overthinking it too much, but you are on the right track. Just because you have your existing customers, remember you have a 60 to 70% chance they're gonna buy from you again, as long as you're presenting the right offer. So the easiest things you can do for those existing customers is offer promotions that are relevant to something happening either in, during that month or yeah, during the month or a current event. So for example, their birthday, Mother's Day, uh, Christmas, whatever. Buying a gift card is one of the easiest things to upsell to someone that's a, a part of your list already. Hey, we have a special offer. You don't have to do anything. You could just use a WooCommerce gift card plugin and they're basically just giving you money and you just keep track of when, when they, they're coming to use it. It's a simple funnel. It's just basically a page that says, I'm doing something great and exciting, especially for the holiday season. And I'm selling these gift cards, which you can use for your loved one. That's your video. That's a sales page. Next page is your order form. And the order form is where you capture the information. The next page could be an upsell. By the way, why don't you set up a quarterly subscription and every, you know, you'll get one wax every quarter, all, all included already. So now you just created a product, a sale without having to deliver. And remember, you have your calendar, so they have to book it. So it's not going to get out of control for you anyways, uh, on uh, maybe until you, you get to the point where you're getting too many clients, but that's a good problem to have. You have to just hire more people, but yes, you do want to add more funnels for existing customers because the purpose of the funnel, it's kind of like putting, it's kind of like a horse. If you, if you see a horse, you see that they have blinders. The reason why is because you don't want them to be moving to the left or to the right. You want them to focus on moving forward. Funnel pages are kind of like funnel uh, blinders for humans. You want it to be obvious what you want them to do. So the purpose of a funnel, a funnel page, is to make it 
really simple to know what you want them to do on your page. Watch this video, click this button, move to the next page. Give me your credit card information. Click OK. Boom. Do you watch this video? Do you want to upsell? Yes. Click the button. Confirmation. Here's your information. Save this information for future use. So funnels are basically to help you simplify what you want them to do. Make sense? So it's, yes. for, yeah, it's for new customers. It's for existing customers. It's for everyone. Even for your staff. When you're onboarding your team, you sometimes need to build a funnel to help them understand what you need them to do. Before you move forward, watch this video, click this button, move on to the next page. So funnels are just a fancy way of saying, I want you to not pay attention to anything else other than what I want to show you. That's all. That's all it is. All right. Carlos, yes. I see this very important, but most importantly behind this is a keyword that you mentioned, which is over deliver which it's extremely important. You need to make sure that the person is receiving more than what they're paying for. Absolutely. Otherwise, you will fail with entire success. Absolutely. So Absolutely. And the, the, the easiest thing you can do to over deliver without having to come out of pocket or go crazy is don't reinvent the wheel. And you can go to IDPLR. <laughs> Dot com and just download Brazilian wax stuff. <laughs> you can download a bunch of things. I'm gonna type in beauty. So if if they're into Brazilian wax, then beauty is probably something they're interested in. So see what they have rega regarding beauty. And look, by the way, organic beauty is an e ebook that we're gonna include to all of our customer customers, which has a $59 value. Gonna get to all my customers absolutely free. Plus, I'm gonna give you the elixir of long longevity and the foolproof diet all for being a one of my customers and you have to do nothing but do a quick little research something you could have your assistant do if you want so oscar i, I that's, that's for sure 100 percent the truth people come back to you because they feel like they get the most value from you so how do you do that without reinventing the wheel doing extra work and driving yourself crazy and coming out of pocket someone is selling it already take advantage all I have right. a question. Go ahead. Uh, uh, thanks very much, Carlos. This has been fabulous. You're very so, welcome. So this, this is my question. We're in, in order to move through this stage from suspect to potential lead, et cetera, once you make the suspect a like potential lead, do you use emails to move them along? that scope? I mean, you're going to use Facebook to, for the suspects and then emails for the other stages. Is that right? I use, actually, I use a combination of all of them because not everyone responds the same exact way, right? So I will use text messages. I will use email. I will use Facebook retargeting. When they have achieved what they want them to achieve, Every single one of those platforms receives an update to stop sending them these messages or stop showing them these ads. So that way I'm not wasting money on people that have already taken action. For example, let's say if my goal is to get them to book an appointment, okay? If they book an appointment, they had to have landed on my booking confirmation page. On that confirmation page, there's a code that will let Facebook know, do not show this ad to anyone who's landed on the confirmation page. That's how I handle Facebook. For email and texting, I use a software, Calendly is one of them that does really well. Um, and I use a software called Book Like a Boss. Book Like a Boss will tell Zap. Book Like a Boss. <laughs> Absumo deal, you know what I'm talking about? You are about? such a nut, I love it, I love it. <laughs> Blab. A Book Like a Boss updates Zapier aka the duct tape of the internet and tells active campaign that this person booked an appointment so stop sending text messages stop sending emails start sending them this next sequence of message messages which is don't forget to show up this is what you expect for our call um before our call to download this pdf this is how we could prepare etc so it's a combination because not everyone responds the same way 
but they all have the same goal and which is to mo- make them move to the next step. Does that help? Okay. Good to go. Good to go. Awesome. That's a good question because that's like, how do you, how do you make it so that you're still de- delivering a good personal experience without having to go crazy? And that's like the simplest way to do it. I know I'm oversimplifying it, but I'm telling you like the technology is there for us to do it. It just takes a little bit of practice. If you guys are a part of digital marketer, I don't know if you guys are, and, and maybe I could do something with Elementor. Um, perhaps I can build some automations. So that way I can show you how I would build the automations and you guys can go ahead and, and just see how the hot dog is being made right behind, you know, right in front of your face. And I will answer a question. So maybe Mike, we'll, we'll kind of just coordinate. Maybe we could do like a joint meetup. So that way I can build some automations and get rocking from there. Now, that's yeah. not a cool idea. All right. What other questions you guys have? You guys are probably gonna have questions right when you're laying in bed or right in the shower. Oh man, I got a good question right now. So just make sure you tell Mike and we'll, we'll keep in touch. All right, good to go. Put your, so, put your website, put your website into the, uh, into the chat. Yeah, I, I'll do it right now. I'll put my main site, which is miamimarketer.com. Hold yeah, on a second. You guys all join the, uh, the Slack group. I can send you Carlos's, all of Carlos's info in there. Also have the replay out there as well. So make sure you drop your email into the chat if you haven't already. So I can get you into the Slack group, Chicago Elementor. Carlos, good stuff, man. Thanks for coming Mike, out. Mike, where do we send Tyler some money? Because Tyler is like overwhelmed. He's got to bring, he got, he's got to bring the fastball for his <laughs> SEO session. <'Cause> Carlos, <laughs> Carlos killed it. Carlos killed it. I'm here, man. I'm here for you guys, man. <laughs> I, I love this stuff. High. Yeah. This is why I do it, man. I already set up a strategy call with him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that was quick. That's a that's a potential lead right there. That's a, no, that's a lead at that point. Now he knows what I do. Now he just wants to see how I can do it for specifically for his business. So yeah, yeah man, this is it. Uh, this is how it works. Starbucks does it. McDonald's does it. Don't reinvent the wheel. This is the same process everyone's using. So just make it your own. So yeah. all right, Th- that's the active campaign sticker right there. In case look into active campaign. I love active campaign. And um, in addition, I'm a certified consultant. That's how much I love it. So, cool. All Valeria right, guys. has a question. Valeria has a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was just gonna ask how you can create the funnel into like um, in-store interactions or like in-person connections. I know that it's like weird to talk about that right now, but what, what do you what do you mean? Like, to, to tell me a little bit more of a use case example, and and I'll try to piece it. Like. But, I'm trying to have um, someone come in for for our event, for our coffee event. All right. How, how are you converting that funnel offline? Like how okay. are you that part? I got you. I, I think I got you. And this is the, the closest thing that I, I can think of. Number one, I have a barbershop. All right. I, I don't have a barbershop. I have a, a, a trade agreement with, a, with my barber. That's why I have a my nice high and tight. That's how I roll. And um, they got TVs. So that way, when you're sitting down, you got nothing better to do while you're waiting other than see the, the, the music video is playing and whatever. We have a contest funnel that says, do you want free haircuts for a year? All right. Co-branding, it, co-branding. What was that? Co-branding. Yeah. I actually, we, we, do a, we did a digital signage. I get to put my ads on there and everything. One of the ads on there is a win free haircuts for a year. Um, and then we put the web address there. That takes them to our contest funnel and people sign up and let me show you, show you the software that I use. It's also WordPress. Um, and hang on a second. And the software is called rafflepress.com. Rafflepress has a direct integration with uh, active campaign and Zapier as well. I think MailChimp and get response. And what this does, it just serves the contest component. And this is the viral contest funnel where the free irresistible offer is signing up for your chance to win this amazing prize. So I tell people, if you, if you want free haircuts for a year or you want free coffee for a year, or um, you want sign up for an Amazon gift card, whatever, whatever offline to convert them online, I make them go to a contest funnel because contest funnels seem to be one of the most effective ways people would want to sign up for anything anyways. But what's really cool about this is that this software gives you the power to add additional actions 
to incent that's my dog crying to incentivize that person to do additional things that we want them to do. For example, um, give me your cell phone number that, and that gives you an entry. Um, if you follow us on Twitter, that's an entry, visit us on LinkedIn. That's another entry. So we can basically increase our, our reach, have them do additional items. But one, one of the most powerful ones is this refer a friend one right here. Now, what do all these actions mean? It's kind of like a fishbowl. If you ever seen like these restaurants, if you throw in your business card, they say, Hey, win a free lunch. You know, we're going to choose a winner at the end of the month. You put your hand in the, in the fishbowl, they pull out a card. That's the winner. These actions basically add more business cards to the fishbowl and the refer a friend. If they refer someone to the contest with their unique link, that gives the, that originator an extra entry into the contest. So they're basically incentivized to spread the word on the contest. <clears throat> So that's one way you can convert offline and online. And now they're added to your funnel, your automation, have them buy a special offer, 10% offer, get, have them go to your sales funnel and it goes down from there. So that's how we've done it for the barbershop. And that's how we've done it for a, a shoe store in Spain. Does that, did I get it? Yeah, you did. You hit it right there. Amazing. Okay, cool. So that's how you marry offline and online together Thank you so much. So you're very welcome. You're very welcome. If you, raffle press is awesome. They got a lifetime deal. Um, I got it. I, I offer it to my clients. It's, it seems pricey at first, but when you charge, when well, you could charge a client 1500 bucks to build a viral contest funnel, Hey, they're more than happy and pays for itself. So it's awesome. All right. What, what other questions? I love this stuff. I love geeking on these things. I just put one on the chat. Uh, I wonder what the third column in your table at the beginning is. Oh, okay. The third column, uh, since I built Read the complete. Read the complete question. Hey, I I wonder what the third column in the in the in your table at the beginning of the sales process was for. Is it a coming soon presentation by you? Kinda, sort of. All right. We want more. Right? So, just to give you an idea, that what I just did for y'all is usually part of my strategy session for a potential customer. Fiber. I'm a Fiber Pro. So Fiverr, they approached me and they said, Carlos, we, we love what you're doing. We want to feature you as a Fiverr Pro. And I said, oh, cool, but I don't know what I'm going to offer because my products are kind of expensive to be offering for five bucks. No, no Fiverr Pro, you can charge more money. And, um, you know, you're, you will, we're, you're hand vetted by our, profession, our, our, our staff. So I said, okay, let me go ahead and start with the digital marketing conversion strategy. What I just did for you guys is basically my digital marketing conversion strategy. And it's basically my best selling gig because people don't know what they don't know. So for three, for 30 minutes, they'll pay 250 bucks and you can see the reviews I have. Let's see if I can scroll down. Look, I got 159 reviews and I had two people say four stars and 157 people say five stars. So for the most part, the track record is good. So that third column, I was going to bring it back is when I do the strategy session for people, I explain the stages, I explain the offers, but the third column is their unique offer. I actually work the offers with them. So that <coughs> way I can help them figure out what's working now in their specific industry. And that's why by, by habit, I always add that third column in there because that's how right. I always do it for people. <laughs> Mari Concern, you have us on the funnel now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what's our plus one if we buy this right now? Oh, man. No, no, there's, you don't. You don't need to. Don't worry, uh, about okay. this. don't worry about this. I'd rather you focus on automation gorillas because that right there, I'll give you more value for that one, man. So, <laughs> very good, Carlos. Excellent, excellent as guys. always. Thank you very yeah, much, pleasure. Carlos. Um, do we have any last second questions here before we finish up? All right, Carlos. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're gonna do a quick um, screenshot okay. here. Elementor asked us to to do. Uh, do like a, a photo here so if everybody could jump on their cameras here i'm going to take a quick screenshot make sure you look happy yeah all right is that it is that all we got a couple more cheers <laughs> i need to redo that because i didn't have it full enough okay. all, right, here we go. <laughs> all right here we go all right three two one elementor got it cool Thank, thank you again, Carlos. Make sure um, all of you, you know, put your email in there for the Slack group and then join us next month. We'll be meeting on January 13th. We meet the second Wednesday of every month. 
Next month, we're gonna go over three things all website owners should know about privacy laws. My friends over at Termageddon, they do privacy policies for agency, web agencies. And uh, it's, it's a, um, they're, they're married, that one of them's attorney, one of them uh, owned a web agency, so they have a lot of good stuff to share. Uh, privacy is a huge thing. The, the laws are getting more strict. You have a contact form on your website. You need a privacy policy or else you can get sued. So there's all types of mess going on there. So um, let me yeah, add, so let jump me add to that, Mike. Join us. Mike, let me add to that. Yeah. I actually use Termageddon. Um, Do you? Okay. They, they, um, you need privacy policy. If you're going to do Facebook ads, you need privacy policy. You have to. There's no way around it. Yeah. And of course, you want to cover your butts with the terms and conditions. There are certain things you're, that people are going to... I, I deal with it all the time. I mean, it, the, the, you have to put that information in there. And if not, you as the agency can get in trouble and whatever. It's a long story. Termageddon, what they do is they basically know the laws in, 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 all, in most of all the states for the, the typical stuff. You as an agency can have the code and you can embed that code on your client's site, charge a client so that way the person, your client ha always have the updated privacy policy for that state or the terms and conditions. It's just a code and term again will automatically populate that entire page with the latest stuff day of like whatever the new laws are, they automatically update it. So that's one less thing I worry about. And cl clients think I'm a genius for it. Well, in reality, I just copy and pasted their code and let term again and do all that work for me. Yeah. So Hans and, uh, Hans and Denai, they're good, they're good people. Um, and they're going to share a lot with us. So she, she's an attorney. He, he's, uh, he owned a web agency. They, when they were, I don't know if they were dating at the time or when they got married, they decided to start a business together. And that's when Termageddon was born. So make Smart. sure you join. It's uh, definitely a, a challenging topic for sure, being that it's legal and laws and all that stuff. So, all right, great. Well, everybody have an excellent holiday. See you on the Slack channel. If you guys have any questions, I'll pass along Carlos's information as he, as I get it from him and you'll get the replay soon. All right, guys. That was thrown, Thank you. <laughs> Thanks guys. Have a good one. Have a good Appreciate evening. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. That was awesome. Awesome. Happy awesome. New Year. Yes. Happy Bye, New Year. Thank Bye, you, Carlos. Bye, everyone.